he tells Neo, and then he jumps across from one <laughs> one skyscraper to the next. That's really why we're we're here is to to have that freedom. So I'm very much at your service, and also uh, I see Helena here and Jason's here. Uh, we we're here to to join with you in that way. And also, if you're pretty new um, to me or to my teachings, um, just as a quick summary, I, I started uh, with the course in 1986, and in 1991, I was guided to just, I might say, impelled to just start traveling. And I was told, you know, pretty much the same thing the apostles were told, take no thought for what you should wear, what you should eat. Don't worry about transportation, food, lodging, all the things that seem very practical in this world, but I was told don't worry about them. Pay attention, listen. Uh, I will provide for you, I will show you the way, and you have to just stay tuned in. That's your job. Stay willing, stay open, stay tuned in. So from 1991 to 1996, I kind of was like Jesus and the Apostles, kind of uh, just floating around, not knowing from day to day where I would be staying, um, not knowing where the meals would come from, just trusting. And like I was just sharing earlier, not trying to develop more trust, but just trying to unplug from the ego and put my faith and trust in the Holy Spirit to truly take care of all aspects of my life, not just some aspects, but all aspects. And many of the things that I experienced during those five years have continued today. Instead of just traveling locally or around the, United, the continental United States, now I pretty much seem to go around the world. And so the context has changed a little bit in the sense that instead of getting uh, donations to put gasoline in my little three-cylinder Chevrolet Sprint. Uh, now it involves uh, airplanes a lot. And sometimes buses and trains and subways and all kinds of fun things, scooters. But actually, and people can say, well, airplanes, that's a little bit bigger. And yes, with frequent flyer miles and donations that come in from, from gatherings, that's been very helpful for me to just kind of continue on uninterrupted to do what I was doing back in 1991, which was just floating around and meeting people and sharing ideas, sharing a lot of joy. But I really learned that in order to really go for and maintain an experience of, of peace and enlightenment, this idea of reciprocity, of I'll do this for you if you'll do this for me, reciprocity, contracts, and so on and so forth, I really saw that that was, that really wasn't going to fit with my life and my lifestyle. Uh, that I really had to be trusting in the Holy Spirit for absolutely everything, because as soon as I would make an agreement, a bargain, uh, some kind of something set up in terms of a contractual agreement or whatever, I would see that immediately there were expectations and parameters that were part of that agreement. Uh, anything from a, from a marriage to any kind of a contract that you have, you know, there's, it's basically signing on a dotted line saying, well, I will do this and this and this, or I will perform these things, or I will agree to these things if you will agree to compensate, pay, you know, so forth. It's, uh, it has a lot of expectations with it. And I found that peace of mind and expectations don't really go together. As soon as you expect something from somebody, it's like the ego is just like sitting back there going, uh -huh. I, can, I can use this one, I'll play this to the hilt. And so for me it was very, very important uh, just trusting, living on donations. And that has been something that has continued straight through for me. Um, it's not so much uh, a matter of the form, but it's a matter of the content. That, that the ego is a reciprocal belief. It's a belief that something's lacking and that you need something to be fulfilled in form 
for there to be peace and happiness. And I find that that the whole teachings that I've experienced with the Course in Miracles is that nothing has to be fulfilled in form, and that more than that, that the world of form is not really outside. It, that is entirely a, a mental phenomenon. You know, like the, Jesus says in the Course, that all illness is mental illness. He's just saying the same thing, that, that all struggles, all conflicts, all sense of um, disease in any way, shape, or form is a mental phenomenon. It really has nothing to do with the physical world. He's saying the same thing that quantum physics is teaching, is that there really is no external world uh, to the observer. It's, it's in the unified field, everything is just completely connected. And there is no perceiver and perceive. So, in practical terms, that has been very important. Um, because over the years, I have had people that say, well, I know I told you this, or I told you that, but I've changed my mind. I've decided not to honor the agreement. And basically when I've gone to Jesus or the Holy Spirit with it, they say, so be it. <laughs> You're not going to get uh, any sympathy or support from the Holy Spirit. But I've been mistreated. <laughs> I said, I told you in the Course, beware of the temptation to perceive yourself unfairly treated. You know, you have the slightest inkling that something's not right, that something's gone amiss. And then I keep, it's almost like a, like a little recording in my mind of this teaching from the Course. I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience. And I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. Okay. No victimization in there. That is tight. That is a tight statement. Air tight. That is spirit tight. You know, there's no way that the ego can, can get a, a baby toenail in on that one. There's just no room for, no wiggle room. And at first, you know, it's like, oh, come on, cut me a break. And then the more you go with it, it's like, thank God. Thank you for being so uncompromising, spirit. Thank you for never perceiving or siding with a grievance. Uh, if you, that's a sure fire way to make uh, God laugh, is tell God your grievance, you know. And, and at times it's actually happened where I've had a friend of mine call up, uh, one time a friend of mine called me on the phone and I answered the phone and she was just like, I'm in hell, I'm in hell, I can't stand it, I'm in hell, I'm in hell. And it just went on for three minutes just about this and that. And I just could not help but laughing. I just burst into laughter. I mean after a couple of minutes of this hell stuff, it just, it's just got too much to take. And then there was this silent pause on the phone, and then this voice at the other end of the phone said, Okay, I can see you're not in hell. <laughs> and then she said, um, What did you do the last time you were in hell? <laughs> and so the Spirit kind of gave a little uh, synopsis that I was actually, I remember, uh, feeling this emotion coming up, and I remember saying to myself, okay, I'm going to go and sit down in a chair, and I'm not going to get out of the chair, I, I said to the ego, until you get out of my mind, or you, you release. I've got nowhere to go, nothing to do. Of course, I was pretty far into this Divine Providence stuff, so I didn't have a job or anybody <laughs> waiting for me. <laughs> so the ego couldn't come in with, uh-huh. You're going to be fired, and it's like, now I've long past that, I'm not leaving this chair until you leave. And that was kind of a, an, un, an uncompromising moment, again, where it's like, I'm worth it. I'm worth this peace, 